Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2016. Brought to you by Docker. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Seattle, Washington for DockerCon 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Brian Gracely. Our next guest is Sunil Kandekar, who's the CEO of Nuage Networks, part of Nokia. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you, John. Good to see you. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, so, likewise. Docker madness is really exploding in the developer community, certainly galvanizing the digital transformation. But at the end of the day, we always say in theCUBE, the network's the bottleneck. You got it. And <laughs> it's really about what's under the hood. We just had talked to Hedvig, a startup about storage. Yeah. You've seen a lot of disruption, certainly, in how infrastructure's being, um, technology being developed to make it more programmable. Yeah. Where's the story with the network? Where's that fit in? What's the updates there? Because at the end of the day, that's a critical piece of the pie. In indeed, absolutely. For ultimately, for apps to be deployed on the network, uh, on any infrastructure, as you said, network has to get out of the way to create that developer efficiency, to allow for applications to be deployed very quickly. And, and how do you make that happen? Because containers are really being talked about. We are at the conference, 4,000 plus people. Fantastic. However, CIOs know that they have not only the container technology to deal with, but they have virtualized workloads and have had those virtualized workloads for a long time. They have bare metal servers that are supporting applications that probably will never move uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. So you have these very changing, very dynamic environment, and you have to understand how the networking can tie those things together seamlessly. That's where we come in as Nuage Networks uh, because Nuage Networks is essentially a SDN uh, venture of Nokia. Um, and what we have at Nuage Networks, what we have done is it's a modern uh, network policy-based automation platform that allows for any workload, whether it's a virtualized workload, whether it's a container workload, whether it's a bare metal server, all to come together and be stitched automatically to allow for that application to be deployed quickly. How is that different from other SDN cloud architectures right. that you guys are doing within Nokia? Right, so first and foremost, what we have is it's a platform that we've built. It's a virtualized services automation platform. It's not a point solution for only the data center assets to be automated or only the SD-WAN as it's called branch to be automated. What it is, it's a declarative policy-based automation platform that allows for, which is open by the way, completely open, uh, incorporates open source technologies, and allows for all types of workloads within and across data centers, so virtualized workloads, <coughs> bare metal workloads, existing workloads, as well as incorporates different hypervisor and cloud management system technologies and allows for connection to the branch and to the wide area. So you're saying it was built for cloud in mind? Is that what It was very you? much built for cloud enablement in mind, making sure that we didn't forget on the way the existing environment. And what yeah. you're seeing and the difference really between us and other platforms that are out there is essentially some of the SDN platforms are mono, if you will, and very narrow sliver. They're based only for the data center and work only on, only on a mono hypervisor technology or some platforms are only looking at the SD-WAN branch platform, the environment is such that you want, and the CIOs want, an automation platform that is consistent across private, on-prem, as well as public resources, and works across multiple hypervisor technologies. And the big deal there is, because you say point technologies, but that, that's code word for the older, older approaches, which was, you know, back in the mini computer land days, inter-networking, inter you stand up some networks, have policies, and certainly policy-based, you know, packet management, and that was it. That's right. And you manage it within the data center. That's right. And that was adequate at that time. So a vertically integrated stack in that simplified mm -hmm. environment was adequate. Now, now you have not. such a variety of use cases, you have got to deal with the cloud uh, native applications, you've got to deal with the older applications, but you need a consistent platform because ultimately you're looking to align IT to business needs. 
and how do you align IT to business needs? You do that by getting the networking out of the way and creating automation by and delivering operational simplification. Getting network out of the way, I love that. Yeah. I, you know, a lot of CIOs, a lot of CEOs are seeing startups get into their industry. You know, if you're in, if you're in automobiles, there's people that are trying to disrupt you. You're in hotels, everybody knows about those. What, what is the, you know, they, they go, great, I can go hire some application developers, I want to go faster. Yeah. Somebody says, let's get the network out of the way. Who are, who are you selling to then? What, who is that person that says, that sounds great, but I still got to figure out routing, and I got to figure out security, and I got to make it highly available. Who's the decision maker in your world these days? Great, great question, Brian. Um, so a couple of points. One, these days, any large enterprise that is looking to IT to create uh, differentiation for their core business. And it, that means almost every large enterprises rely on IT heavily for their requirements as well as to create a differentiation for their own core product, whatever it might be. Yeah. Whether it's automotive, it's pharma pharmaceutical, uh, it's retail. Those are indeed the customers that we are talking to because what they have is their environment has shifted. As John said earlier, it's not, very simply, uh, simple environment, the environment has become complicated, uh, and to do that, the networking requirements have become a very sophisticated, as in you need application isolation, you need multi-tenancy, you need the ability to deploy policy very, very quickly, you need effortless governance of your security policies and compliance, you need to be able to stitch all these workloads together and also have a strategy for private and public cloud. What that means is, you need the technologies that were available to the uh, top of the, uh, if you will, uh, tier one service providers, and bring that to the enterprises, and that's what we have done. We, what use cases ways, can you, what use cases, specifically around containers and policy, do you see out there? Okay. Can you be specific? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give you an example of a customer that was in OpenStack, Betfair, is um, online betting and we gambling. We had them on cube. Yeah. Uh, that's right, you had Richard, I, think, I believe. Uh, and, and what they have is they have 100 million plus transactions in a day on their infrastructure. Their use case is continuous integration. Anything that they do. At that scale. At that scale. And, and so they're using Nuage to basically create that automation for all their workloads. That's one use case. The other use case is we have a very large Fortune 5 company that is looking to use Nuage for automation of their virtualized machines. So they have a cloud stack, and they have a KVM-based hypervisor with virtual, uh, virtual machines, and they're using containers with Mesos. Yeah. And Nuage is the only platform that's allowing them to stitch these environments together seamlessly, apply the same policy, and same um, So you automation. guys are a platform for a cloud-native-like environment with existing infrastructure. You bring okay. those together. We bring that together in a highly automated way, and then we allow for security, very important security, as in yeah. we prevent um, uh, you know, spread of malware. We, by very quickly being able to enforce the policies, we provide multi-tenancy. Well, Docker's a huge security nightmare because uh, just as much the benefits can interoperate with, I mean, the, uh, the applications can be put in containers, so could viruses. Exactly. And, and they could scale. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what our job is to make sure that. How do you it, do that? It, do, it doesn't do that because by able to very quickly enforce policies and quarantine the workloads. So uh, upon detection of uh, malware, our system gets a notification. Based on that notification, we are able to, because we have full view of all the workloads, whether they are in a private data center, or public data center, or in the branch, we can very quickly then, quickly, effectively, and surgically quarantine that workload because we know exactly where that workload is and we know exactly the policy to enforce. This also helps, by the way, this system also helps by, you know, you get a security threat alert. Today, it's a, it's a brute force approach. You go down and shut down a segment. Now, with this policy-based automation, you go up to the policy and you say, I want only this application to not be allowed to do use this protocol, and instantly that policy is deployed. Yeah. And I I'm sort of picking up on two things. You, you talk about sort of end-to-end, -end, the platform for everywhere. A lot of that's because we don't have boundaries anymore. You know, mobile phone changes exactly. the boundary. The that's exactly branch right. office, people are moving around. So you need to be, you need to have that sort of end-to-end -end visibility. You don't have segmentation like you used to. And you talk about policy, 
you know, I, I need to be able as a developer to go, network team, I need you to sort of give me a service and then I just want to call it. I don't want to have to call you, I might be working at two at night, we might have to change something on the fly. Like that's why the policy piece is so important, is that right? You are absolutely correct, Brian, and that is so critical because ultimately what IT is struggling with is how do they enforce the governance, the security governance. When application needs to be deployed, IT generally gets in the way, not because they want to, because they want to enforce certain security, certain compliance policies. And to, until now, yeah. it has always been that manual process. Now with the security policy-based infrastructure, what they are able to do is they are able to put the policy once and they're ensured that that policy is deployed seamlessly across all their workloads. Yeah. And so they have to audit the policy once and it's guaranteed provisioning, which is error-free provisioning. So right. it's huge in terms of the ability for enterprises to react to problems, but also any changes. The agility this brings, the system brings to the table. Because ultimately, you know, without the network, there is really no cloud. Right. And this and is why we're hearing people talk about SecOps and Sec DevOps and really right. security integrated without automation, consistently automatable, same thing every single time. Absolutely, we have a one customer which is, um, again, a very large financial um, base um, in, in New York and their issue was exactly that in terms of being able to, when I'm talking to their CSO uh, and the chief security officer, the biggest thing that they took away from our policy-based automation was not only the ability to able to stitch all these environments together seamlessly, but being able to provide compliance, being able to provide the automated policy infrastructure for all their workloads, being able to really provide that application isolation. Those are big deals, yeah. very big deals for the CXOs and CSOs. So Neil, we got to wrap, but I want to get your final thoughts on um, Nuage and Nokia. Let me spend a minute to talk about the distinction between the branding, you're the CEO of Nuage. Sure. Obviously, the name's different. Obviously, Nokia is big. You guys are part of that. Yeah, that's right. Explain to the people watching what you guys are about. Size, scope, the kind of engagement, revenue. Sure, sure. Um, and, and how that compares and contrasts to Nokia, which we're part of, but Indeed. there's... So, we are a wholly owned SDN venture of Nokia. And what we are focusing on is this policy-based automation, network automation for the data centers, wide area, and the branches. Uh, Nokia provides us tremendous sponsorship. They're very much behind Cash. this. <laughs> and, and they recognize the value in a, our ability to serve the largest of the largest enterprise customers. But also, because of Nokia, we are able to address and are involved in very large service providers uh, projects. Yeah. So that's what helps us be involved. They have huge scale. So the way we work is we focus on our R&D, the innovation we bring to the table, the uh, yeah. community that we serve, but Nokia provides us uh, the reach, yeah. resources. the global reach, the resources. But you're wholly owned, meaning you run, run independently, if you will. We are, yes, but we are fully owned, owned by Nokia. Okay, we just great. operate and focus on this. It allows us to Number really of focus. customers, can you share some data? Yeah, and we completed two years uh, in the market, and in two years we have uh, over 60 plus customers. We have over 200 uh, uh, deployments that we have completed pilot trials and deployments, but we have 60 plus very large service provider customers, cloud service providers. Uh, one so of huge the integrations. And also, the very big, very big enterprise customers. I, I named yeah. a couple of Fortune 5 companies, uh, but we are in retail, we are in high tech, we are in healthcare, so we are in a new fabric. Insurance. You're a new fabric in these big, high scale infrastructures. That have diverse needs and diverse workloads, yeah. and have the need to stitch all that together in a cohesive fashion to build that automated fabric. For Composable them. almost, right? Composable, yeah. to ultimately bring agility. Uh, and align IT to the business yeah, needs. I love the word composable infrastructure. It really treats the infrastructure as programmable, which is the nirvana. Make it an invisible, make it uh, get out of the way. Get out of the way, but yet make it effortless. Highly, highly performing too, so Indeed. secure, high performance, invisible. That's right. That's infrastructure as code. 
And Neil, thanks for sharing your insight here on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Nuaj Networks, the CEO here on theCUBE, live at DockerCon. I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracely. We'll be right back, you're watching theCUBE.